Hello everyone, this is Miss Hazy. And if you want to keep updated on my next lesson videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. While the previous videos might have amazed you with the different organelles within the cell, this video will plunge you into the differences between the major types of cell, the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells. Cells vary greatly in size, shape, and general forms, yet they exhibit unique characteristic features. They possess these special structural characteristics in relation to the functions they perform. Cells that do not have membrane-bound organelles are prokaryotic cells, while cells that have membrane-bound organelles are eukaryotic cells. A prokaryote is a simple single-celled or unicellular organism that lacks nucleus, as you can see in the figure. The one in blue at the center region, which looks like the scattered noodles, is actually the genetic material of a prokaryote, which is just scattered around the nucleoid region inside of its cell because it doesn't have a nucleus in other membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes are the simplest type of cell, and they appear to be the oldest type of cell, which is believed to have first appeared about 4 billion years ago. Although they are simplest type of cell, Prokaryotes are the largest group of organisms comprising the domains of bacteria and archaea, and they are found in all environments, both outside and even inside other living organisms. Prokaryotes have simple internal structure and at around 0.1 to 5.0 microns in diameter, prokaryotic cells are significantly smaller than eukaryotic cells. The small size of prokaryotes allow ions and organic molecules that enter them to quickly diffuse to other parts of the cell. Similarly, any waste produced within a prokaryotic cell can quickly diffuse out. Most prokaryotes have a peptidoglycan cell wall and a polysaccharide capsule. The cell wall acts as an extra layer of protection helps cell maintain its shape, and prevents dehydration. The capsule enables the cell to attach to surfaces in its environment. Prokaryotes have appendages like flagella, pili, or fimbriae. Flagella are used for locomotion, pili are used to exchange genetic material during conjugation, and fimbriae are used by bacteria to attach to host cells. Prokaryotic cells have a circular chromosomes and have smaller piece of circular DNA called plasmids. Plasmids are small rings of double-stranded extra-chromosomal DNA. Plasmids carry a small number of non-essential genes and are copied independently of the chromosome inside the cell. They can be transferred to other prokaryotes in a population sometimes spreading genes that are beneficial to survival. For instance, some plasmids carry genes that make bacteria resistant to antibiotics. When the plasmid carrying these genes are exchanged in a population, they can quickly make the population resistant to antibiotic drugs. While it may be beneficial to the bacteria, this process can make it difficult for doctors to treat harmful bacterial infections. Prokaryotes come in various shapes, but many fall into three categories. We have cocci or spherical, bacilli or rod-shaped, and spirilla or spiral-shaped. Examples of spherical-shaped bacteria or cocci includes Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, and Streptococcus pneumoniae. Examples of rod-shaped or bacilli, or bacillus in singular form, include bacillus cereus, bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis are the ones that causes anthrax, commonly found in domestic and wild animals. We also have E. coli and Clostridium botulinum. A few examples of spirilla or spherical-shaped bacteria includes Leptospira, 
or those that causes leptospirosis. Also, we also have Borrelia species actually causing Lyme disease specific species and Treponema species such as Treponema pallidum, which causes syphilis. The second major type of cells we have is eukaryotic cells. A eukaryotic cell contains organelles that are held together by membranes. Organisms composed or made up of eukaryotic cells are those in kingdom fungi, protista, plantae, and animalia. Eukaryotic cells have more complex structure than prokaryotic cells. This type of cell contains membrane-bound organelles such as the mitochondria, the Golgi complex, or Golgi apparatus, we have the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum, among others. Because a eukaryotic cell's nucleus is surrounded by a membrane, it is often said to have a true nucleus. Examples of organisms composed of eukaryotic cells include, again, plant, fungi, protist, and animals. Shown is a cross-section of a plant cell. Plant cells have several structures not found in other eukaryotes. In particular, organelles called chloroplasts allow plants to capture the energy of the sun in energy-rich molecules. You also have the cell walls, which allow plants to have rigid structures as varied as wood trunks and supple leaves, and vacuoles, which allow plants to change size. The rigid cell wall of plants are made up of cellulose, and in addition, the plastids in plant cells also store materials such as food and other substances. Plant cells have a cell wall, chloroplasts, and other specialized plastids and a large central vacuum. Like the cells of all eukaryotes, animal cells have nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles, as you see in the figure. Unlike the cells of plants and fungi, Animal cells lack a cell wall. This gives animal cells flexibility. It lets them take on different shapes so they can become specialized to do particular jobs. And again, animal cells do not have a rigid cell wall and chloroplast as shown. Animal cells have a centrosome and lysosomes, whereas plant cells do not. Shown is a cross-section of a fungal cell, specifically a yeast cell. Fungi are unicellular or multicellular thick cell walled heterotrophs. They are the composers that eat decaying matter and make tangles of filaments. Fungal cells also contain mitochondria and a complex system of internal membranes, including the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. Unlike plant cells, fungal cells do not have chloroplasts or chlorophyll. The fungal cell walls are rigid and contain complex polysaccharides called chitin and glucans. Fungi in the morphological vegetative stage consists of a tangle of slender thread-like hyphae, whereas the reproductive stage is usually more obvious. Fungi like to be in moist and slightly acidic environment. They can grow with or without light or oxygen. Fungi are saprophyte heterotrophs in that they use dead or decomposing organic matter as a source of carbon. Then you have here a cell, a paramecium, which is a type of protist. Protists are an incredibly diverse set of eukaryotes of various sizes, cell structure and metabolism, as well as methods of motility. Protist cells may contain a single nucleus or many nuclei, and they range in size from microscopic to thousands of meters in area. Protists may have animal-like cell membranes, plants-like cell walls, or may be covered by a pellicle. Some protists are heterotrophs and ingest food by phagocytosis, while other types of protists are photoautotrophs and store energy via photosynthesis. Most protists are motile, in generate movement with cilia, flagella, or pseudopodia, or false feet. Again, protists, fungi, plants, and animals are eukaryotic organisms, which means that they are made up of eukaryotic cells. Regardless of the cell type, there are basically four common features of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. 
Both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells bear a lipid bilayer, which is an arrangement of phospholipids and proteins that act as a selective barrier between the internal and external environment of the cell. Eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells both use deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, as a basis for their genetic information. This genetic material is needed to regulate and inform cell function through the creation of RNA by transcription, followed by the generation of proteins through translation in the process of protein synthesis. The presence of ribosomes, which facilitate RNA translation and the creation of protein, which is essential to the functioning of both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. The cytoplasm is the medium in which the biochemical reactions of the cell take place, of which the primary component is cytosol. In eukaryotic cells, the cytoplasm comprises everything between the plasma membrane and the nuclear envelope, including the organelles. The material within the nucleus as well is termed as a nucleoplasm. In prokaryotes, the cytoplasm encompasses everything within the plasma membrane, including the cytoskeleton and the genetic material. Though they may have similarities, these two types of cells have a great lineup of differences as well. When it comes to history, prokaryotic cells are believed to have appeared first, while eukaryotic cells appeared much, much later. Talking about differences, organelles like mitochondria, ribosomes, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum, cell wall, chloroplast, and many more are absent in prokaryotic cells, while these organelles are found in eukaryotic organisms. Though cell wall and chloroplasts are not found in the animal cell, it is present in green plant cell, few bacteria, and algae, which are actually eukaryotic organisms. Another main difference between prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cell is the nucleus, which is well-defined in prokaryotes, whereas it is well-structured, compartmentalized, and functional in eukaryotes. Genetic material, or DNA, is circular and double-stranded in prokaryotes, but in eukaryotes, it is linear and double-stranded. And again, prokaryotes are the simplest, smallest, and most abundantly found cells on Earth, while eukaryotes are larger and more complex. Thank you so much for watching.